Can you be overweight or obese and still be healthy? And what is the obesity paradox? And how do we know if actually being overweight can help you with increased survival? This has come to head recently with lots of, uh, lots of media attention ever since Cosmopolitan put out their magazine uh, with on the cover, an obese woman doing yoga with the title, This Is Healthy. Plus there's the movement of the healthy at any size. So is this something that women or everybody should hold on to, to say, yes, being overweight is okay and is healthy, or do we need to get into a little more details so that we're not spreading the wrong message? I'm Dr. Brett Sure, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and this is kind of controversial, but here's my issue. I don't like that that Cosmopolitan article said this is healthy. I don't like that it's healthy at any size. If that, if that Cosmopolitan article said, this is beautiful, this is confident, this is strong, this is an image of self-love, then that's perfectly fine. And I'd be on here supporting that, talking about what a great article it was and how important it is to get rid of fat shaming and for people to be proud of themselves no matter what their size is and to be confident and not have their size impact that. That I agree with. But once you say this is healthy, now you've crossed over to the line of science and we have studies we can fall back on to answer that question. Now here's the other thing, this whole concept of obesity paradox, I think is so funny, Just using that word paradox. So the assumption is obesity is associated with uh, increased mortality and increased risk. And if it's not, therefore it's a quote unquote paradox. So using the word paradox is funny because it's sort of a circular language because you're, you're making the assumption before you have the data. So that's just my little two cents about, about the word paradox. But let's talk about this because there are dozens of studies that have looked at prospectively or retrospectively observational studies, looking at what somebody's body mass index is and what's their risk of dying. Um, and so certain things show up consistently, a very low body mass index, 18 or below has an increased risk of death compared to those who are in the, you know, 20 to 25 range. Um, frequently that's has to do with sarcopenia, um, you know, frailty, um, can also be associated with some chronic medical conditions like, you know, cancers and, um, the good studies will exclude people who've died within like a five year period to exclude those people or some of those people at least, but still low body mass index as we age below 18 is not healthy usually because it's associated with low muscle mass and frailty. And that's the key here. Muscle mass. We're going to keep coming back to that. Also, people who have, you know, what's called grade two or grade three obesity, kind of above a body mass index of 35, clearly have an increased mortality um, and premature mortality. The controversy, I think, comes in for those who are overweight, body mass index between 25 and 30, or even, you know, grade one obesity between 30 and 35. There are some studies, not all, so by no means is it consistent, but some studies show a survival advantage to that group. But again, I want to fall back on not all. And most importantly, that's using body mass index, right? So I think the more important studies are when, when they look at body fat percentage and lean mass. And for those study, there's no so-called paradox. There's no, you know, dip and rise. The, if you have a high body fat percentage and a low lean mass percentage, and it actually is not or it's, it's, I mean, it's not and, it's or, either a, a high body fat percentage or a low lean mass percentage, and certainly both together, that increases your risk of dying and dying prematurely. So one of the questions is, what are we using to define overweight and obese and correlate it to health? If it's just body mass index, then we're not seeing the whole picture. The other thing that can be used is physical activity level, physical fitness, because that's when you control for physical activity level in those studies that show a survival advantage to people who are overweight or obese, they tend to have um, those with higher physical activity levels have their survival advantage. Those with lower physical activity levels do not and have an increased risk of mortality. So I don't think it's fair to make a blanket statement that um, being overweight comes with a survival advantage. That is just far too simplistic. And is it's important because we don't want to give people a sense of false confidence, right? Because 
body mass index, the weight on the scale is such a crude measurement. And we say it time and time again here at Diet Doctor, it's such a crude, crude measurement and we have the tools to do better. Sure, if you can get a DEXA scan or if you can get a, a hydrostatic weight or a bod pod um, or um, even the calipers or bioimpedance scale, all of those are better ways to track your weight and your body fat percentage rather than just uh, the number on the scale, but not everybody has access to those. So things like a weight to height ratio, um, that's, you know, if that's less than 0.5, chances are you have good metabolic health. And that's one of the big kickers is what is your metabolic health? You can be metabolically unhealthy at a normal body mass index, and you can be metabolically healthy at an elevated body mass index. But the key is you don't know unless you measure it. So if you just go by body mass index and say, if you're overweight, you're still healthy. No, I want to know what your glucose is, what your insulin is, what your HDL, triglycerides, blood pressure, your waist to height ratio, all of those things are so much more important than just your body mass index. So that's when we have, when we have simplistic crude measuring techniques, we end up with simplistic and crude uh, statements like being obese is healthy. And that is not a true statement. And that is going to mislead a lot of people into a false sense of confidence. But it doesn't mean you can't be empowered and confident and beautiful at any weight or any size. But what it does mean is you need more information. If you are overweight or obese by your body mass index, you need more information. What is your waist to height ratio? What is your body fat percentage? What are your metabolic health parameters? Those are the keys to determine if you are healthy or not, right? The weight itself certainly doesn't say you're 100% healthy, but doesn't say you're 100% unhealthy either. And that's why we have to avoid these simplistic statements. Now, when it comes to body fat percentage, we have a whole guide on body fat percentage. You know, what is the sort of goal body fat percentage if you're trying to reach that? I already mentioned the waist to height ratio of less than 0.5. That's the easiest. You just need a tape measure or even a piece of string. But for body fat percentages for women, on average between 15 and 25% is kind of the ideal. It varies according to age, um, but definitely below like 30 to 35% depending on age. Now, does that mean you have to reach that normal range? No, but if you're above that 30, 35, you're in or above the 30 to 35% range, you definitely want to start trying to bring it down toward that 15 to 25% range for women. For men, it's the 8 to 20% range. Um, and definitely below 25%. So it's not that you have to be in that normal range to be healthy, but you should definitely be trying to be moving on your spectrum closer to that quote unquote normal range, because that's where you're bound to see better health and better metabolic health, because metabolic health is going to track better with body fat percentage and lean mass than it is going to with just body mass index. And then the other part is, beyond just body fat is visceral fat, right? And that's going to also tend to track with uh, being metabolically unhealthy, having more visceral fat and being metabolically healthy, having less visceral fat. And that's going to be more strongly correlated with risk of dying and risk of comorbid conditions, um, especially cardiovascular disease, diabetes, other metabolic conditions. So um, we have to get away from the simple statement um, of, being overweight and obese is perfectly healthy because that is too simplistic. Not that it can't be true, but you need more information. So what can you do if you want to improve your body composition, if you want to decrease your body fat percentage and increase your lean mass and improve your metabolic health? Well, low carb, moderate to high protein diet is fairly consistently associated with that type of progress in science and in clinical practice. It's a great way to lose weight, um, to lose predominantly fat mass and not lean mass and especially visceral mass. And then if you can combine that with some sort of resistance training, even better because that's how you're going to maintain your lean mass as you're losing your fat mass. So important to do. Um, you need the uh, right amount of protein and the resistance training together to really help maintain that lean mass. Um, and then if you eat in a way where you're eating the foods you enjoy and you're naturally satiating, so high satiety per calorie where you're feeling full, you're not hungry, you're getting all the nutrition you need, that's, that's the goal. That's the secret right there um, to find that way of eating. And for a lot of people, it's some version of low carb, doesn't have to be keto, could be a moderate low carb diet with moderate to high protein. 
Um, now, time-restricted eating actually is kind of controversial. Um, a couple studies would suggest that maybe you lose lean mass with time-restricted eating. But looking at the literature as a whole, again, if you're, if you're following a moderate protein diet with some resistance training and not doing extended fasting but doing time-restricted eating, perfectly safe to do that and likely will be um, improving lean mass with that as well. So quick summary, can you be obese and healthy? Yes. But does being obese or overweight by definition mean you're healthy as the title of that Cosmopolitan uh, article suggested or as the um, title of healthy at any size suggests on the surface, right? They might may not be what they're saying, but that's what it suggests on the surface. And that is not the case. If you're overweight or obese, you need more information. You need to make sure you're losing weight in a healthy way. Way. So that's what we're here for at dietdoctor.com. We want to provide you with all the tools, all the information so that you can progress on your health journey, which may include weight loss, but if it does, it should include healthy weight loss. Thanks a lot. If this was helpful, please click thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you here next time on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Mm-hmm.